Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Of course, back here with David. We're going to be doing a Vaxel Bio uh, kind of deep dive, you know, high level go over, of course, what the company's about, the science, um, and some other stuff. But first things first, David, how are you? Great, thanks, Jason. How are you doing today? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Let's uh, let's hop into it. You know, so uh, of course, I'll throw it to you. Do you want to introduce? Uh, maybe you even want to do the thirty second elevator pitch um, for you know Vaxel Bio. You know, if someone said, "Oh, what's this company about?" What would you say? Sure. Uh, Vaxel is uh, an immunotherapy company focused on infectious diseases and oncology. Talk to me. So, you know, of course we get biotech. Talk to me about the science um, in a way that imagine, you know, I'm four, I was 14 or, or 16. I had no idea um, about science. Um, what would you say? Yeah. So Vaxel's platform is based on something very unique uh, called signal peptides. It's a very unique part of the human uh, biology. Very few companies are focused on this, so we're excited to be one of those. Uh, you hear sometimes about peptide therapeutics, so lots of companies are out there looking at peptides, and it's been a target for a long time. In fact, it was in fashion uh, years ago. But signal peptides is a very specific uh, subset uh, that allows us to go after unique aspects, it makes us believe strongly in our platform that what we can offer eventually both in cancer and in various infectious diseases like COVID-19, uh, that we actually have a really important role in helping in those disease areas. Uh, these signal peptides have some pretty unique advantages. First of all, they're in a part of the protein that uh, stays over time. So even when there are mutations, this part tends to stay. So what that means is that if a COVID-19 virus were to mutate, we would expect to remain relevant uh, in that space without having to modify our vaccine. Other companies you hear about, for example, uh, in the mRNA space talk about how easily they could modify their vaccines. Um, our hypothesis for our technology is that we wouldn't even have to modify the vaccine. Uh, that still has to be proven, of course, and we have to see what types of mutations might occur, but that's just uh, based on the core technology of signal peptides. So that's one of the unique aspects yeah no cool you you mentioned in there a few things you know you mentioned of course cancer covid uh do you want to dive into of course like maybe just very high level you know for someone's like what could this you know what could this benefit be for and just list some things you know like everyone's heard of cancer everyone's heard of covid of course mm -hmm. do you want to list a few other ones that you know potentially of course uh you know you guys could deal with yeah, so there are a bunch of different infectious diseases that we could potentially uh, come up uh, against that would be relevant for signal peptides. I, I, can't, I don't want to comment necessarily on anything specific because we are uh, always looking at these. Uh, and then once we patent them, we would announce them. Uh, but we're always exploring new infectious diseases. There are some types, viruses and bacteria, uh, where there are no signal peptides that are relevant for us. So we, we quickly move away from those. But there are some very important ones uh, where there is a very significant unmet medical need uh, that we are exploring and doing the computational side of things. We'll eventually get into the, the research side. Uh, but COVID came along and it's a great example of where we were able to do the computational work pretty quickly, find the signal peptides, and now we're progressing through the preclinical stages to uh, explore the efficacy. Yeah. And then on the cancer side, um, our, our lead candidate is, uh, it targets MUC1, which is a very specific type. Uh, and MUC1 is present in a lot of different cancers. Our clinical trial that we ran was for multiple myeloma, but we're now looking more at uh, solid tumors uh, where uh, a lot of different cancers have MUC1 probably worth thinking about cancer not as one disease, but as lots of different diseases. Uh, so MUC1 is present in lung cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer in, in very significant, uh, it has a significant presence there. Cool. No, uh, awesome. I think and that makes it a lot more real for people, of course, that are listening. Do you want to talk through, obviously, uh, you know, you already alluded to it, the research, you know, where, what stage is the company at? Um, and we'll go into kind of, you know, next steps in a little bit. But do you want to just talk about what's been done, I guess? We refer to ourselves as a clinical stage biotech company, which is a pretty unique position to be in. There are lots out there that are preclinical that have only done work either in the lab or with animals. Uh, but we actually ran a clinical trial. It was a phase 1-2-A, which is aimed at 
uh, proving safety uh, and looking at efficacy only from sort of a signal perspective. So basically just looking to see that there is some kind of immune response. That clinical trial was in multiple myeloma years ago. Uh, and now we're looking at various different ways of getting back into clinical trials in oncology. Uh, it takes time. I know uh, some of the people out there uh, wonder why it takes so long, but it's not so easy for a company of our size, scope, and scale to do all this work. Obviously, when you're a much bigger company, you have uh, lots more resources. Uh, but we are uh, looking at this. We did uh, a partnership with Ben Gurion University uh, where we in licensed uh, product from there. We're looking at uh, that as a, as a possible uh, combination therapy. Uh, and we also have lots of ideas of other combination therapies. So our signal peptide, MUC1 signal peptide called Immucin in combination with other drugs that are out on the market already. Uh, and we, we look at those various options. Uh, getting back into a clinical trial obviously costs a lot of money uh, where we'd have to go out and, uh, and raise money for that. But the preclinical work is something that we we have ongoing on the cancer side. Awesome. No, cool. I think that's a you know great high level. Is there anything else you would add to that? Again, for the you know the everyday person who isn't a scientist or a doctor, um, is there anything you would add on top? And you know, for the investors, of course, that we hope that are watching this, um, you know, is there something else you would tell them about the company? Yeah, so I think uh, still on the technology side of things, I would say um, that, that part of the strength of our platform is we believe in the oncology side that not only do we target the primary tumor, but we also can have the potential to target the metastatic process, so the spread of the cancer. Uh, and that's what gives us confidence and, and belief that we can have a big impact, uh, both alone and in combination with other therapies to actually kill the primary site, the first place where the cancer penetrates, but also stop it from spreading. And that's, uh, that's a huge need uh, out there. There are very few opportunities and options uh, already out there for uh, preventing the metastases, the spread of the cancer. Um, in infectious diseases, uh, we also, are, uh, because of the signal peptide platform, we also have a very unique approach where uh, even though there are vaccines that are now you know, emergency approved in the US and several other countries and a few more on the way, we still think that we are very relevant in the COVID space because of the advantages that our platform presents. Uh, the first one that I mentioned already around the hypothesis that we would sustain through a mutation. Uh, the fact that the signal peptides are part of an early process uh, in the cell development means that uh, we actually have the potential to uh, stop the replication of the virus early, but using a mechanism that's very different from the mRNA, uh, from the uh, virus approaches that are being used, the weakened virus and so on, uh, where the immune response is robust. Also, you hear a lot today about the importance of T cell response. The T cells actually do a lot of things, including create memory. They are the ones that will uh, that, that will prepare the immune system to have a lasting response to uh, COVID-19, for example. And so our platform should have a robust T cell response. There is the anticipation on the mRNA technology side that they have that as well, uh, but many of the others do not. So the importance of the uh, cellular and the humoral response uh, is another aspect of, of our platform. And then one other quick point that I would make uh, that's very practical, uh, about our platform is uh, that it's actually very easy to scale up. So once we know the manufacturing process and we've got the formulation, uh, manufacturing our vaccine or treatment uh, is actually very easy. It doesn't require biological processes that a lot of the other vaccines require in the COVID space, for example, also the uh, monoclonal antibodies. Uh, there are lots of difficulties in the manufacturing process for those. Although uh, they've been worked out, uh, they still require complex processes. The traditional vaccine approach still relies on uh, technology that's decades old and very difficult uh, to operate. And there's lots of loss in the manufacturing process and that's part of why it's so expensive. Signal peptides are, um, are very easy to manufacture. They're inexpensive. And that gives us the opportunity to scale uh, once we know the manufacturing process scaling is very easy. It's a chemical process. 
There's not uh, all sorts of fancy, sophisticated equipment that uh, needs to be uh, purchased and, and scaled. So we have a huge advantage there and that translates also into cost. So it means that our cost of scaling is relatively inexpensive and allows us to be extremely competitive eventually at price as well. Yeah, no, awesome. And this kind of leads into the next question and what makes you guys different from some of the other, you know, preclinical or clinical uh, companies, you know, whether they're in your space or more just within biotech from an investor standpoint, they have to pick, you know, what do they think has ground? Um, you know, what will you say to them? So I think the science would be the first thing, right? I mean, obviously the science is unique, uh, including the fact that we have IP on a lot of these ideas that would prevent anybody from even trying to copy what we're doing. Uh, there's also knowledge that's not protected by patents that we have uh, trade secrets where we understand certain things about this. So the science would be the first place and the ability to help patients uh, both effectively uh, but also uh, relatively easily uh, once we can get through these stages of research. So again, that scaling up process. Um, I think this, the other thing that differentiates us from many of the other companies, and it's not a right or a wrong, but many of the startups, the early startups are led by, by the science. And I also started with the science story for sure. And I've got you know 35 years in the pharma industry. So I, I am very much... Uh, a science kind of person, but I have 35 years in pharma uh, on the commercial end of things. And I think that's pretty unique. I think that having a company that has both a heavy weight on science, but also a very good understanding of how science gets translated into the marketplace uh, is, is a unique advantage that we have. Uh, we have an outstanding board of, uh, with also physicians and people who understand the business side of things. Um, and, and I think those are um, critical factors for success where it's nice to pursue science for the sake of science, but I think that's probably best done in academia. And what we're trying to do is bring science to commercial uh, benefit, meaning bring it to patients uh, so that we can help patients. And if we can help patients, then everybody will benefit from that. First and foremost, the patients, but also, of course, the shareholders. Yeah. No, awesome. I, you did a great job. You kind of capped it all. You gave some, of course, good examples. Um, and I know it can be hard in biotech, and, but we're hoping that, of course, these videos make it easier for people. Now, there's going to be a ton of questions that come and uh, we're very ready to do a Q&A video. But that being said, is there anything else about the company uh, you would say to someone who's hearing about Vaxil for the first time? I think we covered it. Perfect. Well then, hey, we'll leave it here again. I know we're ready for some for some questions. Uh, please, you know, I encourage uh, leave them below. We'll either get you an answer, or we'll put it in a video, if not both. Uh, David, thanks so much for joining. Sure, thanks, Jason, and uh, wishing everybody good health.